Hi, it's Nicole. Today I have a few editions of the Shakespeare's plays I've got. If you are considering which of these is the best for you, which one to buy, I hope this video will give you some ideas. Different editions will meet the need of different readers. My need will almost certainly change and my preference will change as well. But for now, I am a beginner reading Shakespeare's plays. So because I'm a beginner, I don't really care very much who the editors are and how the editors make their various decisions. For example, um, which early manuscript they followed, how they interpreted certain words or which line they gave to which character. I just trust them to know the best and so I won't review that kind of thing. And also, because I'm a beginner, my goal is to get a grasp of the general idea of the stories, the yeah, general story of the plays. So I, so my priority is the play themselves and not the studies or the research done at this stage. So I will try to be fair, but my priority will certainly make an impact on my preference. So just bear that in mind. I will give you opinions on three things mainly, the general feel and look of the books, the essays included and the layout of the text of the play. So if it's easy to read or if it's not easy to read. I have six editions. I've read through all of them except one. Um, I will show you one by one in a bit. I'm speaking from the experience of an amateur reader, which means I didn't study this academically, so I didn't have the pressure to read them through, as in the, the essays, I didn't have to read them through, and I didn't have to write essays, for example, which means the design of the books and the writing style of the essays really made a big difference, because if they were interesting, I would carry on reading them. If they were boring, or if I couldn't follow, I didn't read them to the end. So I've got Romeo and Juliet and Henry the Fourth Part One in the Oxford Shakespeare edition. I've got Hamlet and King Henry the Sixth Part Two in the Arden Shakespeare edition, and I've got um, Henry the Fourth Part Two and As You Like It in Penguin Classics edition, and I have. A few from the Oxford School editions. This is Romeo and Juliet, Got Macbeth, and The Tempest. And I have Much Ado About Nothing in the RSC edition. And I have, lastly, A Meet Summer Night's Dream in Folger edition. So first of all, let's look at the general feel and look of each edition. I will put them next to each other so you can see immediately the shapes and sizes of each. The RSC, Penguin, Oxford and Arden are the same size and Arden is the most chunky. Oxford School is the biggest, like a school textbook size. When you open to read it, the Arden and the Oxford one, you really need to read it at your desk. You can't really <laughs> hold this uh, in one hand lying down in bed for very long. It's very heavy. And the Oxford one annoys me even further because it's very stiff. No matter how much you press it, it won't lie flat in your hand. It keeps closing onto itself and I keep losing my places. It's <laughs> very annoying. And in comparison, if you open the penguin one, it lies flat very happily in your hand and it's just more comfortable to read. You can hold it in, in one hand and it's very light. I like the paper stock of this edition the best. It's very light, very soft. It's not brilliant to white, it's slightly um, like a creamy color, slightly like a newspaper kind of texture. It's very comfortable on your eyes and very comfortable to write in. So that's my favorite paper stock. Another one that has a slightly different paper stock is the RSC one. The RSC one has a silky paper stock, it's slightly shiny, um, which I don't like because when I write on it, the ink smudges so easily. Another thing I I have against this edition is it's quite expensive, it's quite small, look how slim it is. Um, there are some articles very good, I'll talk about the articles a bit later, but it's 
quite expensive for the size <laughs> size of it. Um, I don't know if it's because of the paper stock because it's like nice uh, silk silky paper. But if we have to have silky paper, can we please have the images in there um, in color in full color, please? I really love the images, um, but. They are all in black and white at the moment, but I'm just thinking if we can have color photo on silver paper, um, that might be a better combination. Full color images on silky paper, not silver paper, sorry. The Oxford School Edition lies flat beautifully, it's very easy to write on. And the last one, the cover design wise, if I am to have the complete works of Shakespeare on my shelf, the Folger Edition would be the one. I prefer. Secondly, the essays. All of them provide introductions and essays, but the length and depth of each vary greatly. They all have a biography of Shakespeare's life and work, and a essay or a few essays on the play itself, a section on theatre productions throughout the history, and then a section on further reading. I will not list all the essays one by one, it's going to be very boring if I do that. If you need all the titles of all the essays, I'm sure you can find the table of contents of all of them on online. I will just tell you what I like or not like about the essays in each edition, and I will rank them roughly from the least helpful and interesting to the most helpful and fascinating. The Arden and the Oxford are the most academic. The Arden has the most comprehensive and in-depth essays. There are eight essays for Hamlet, each with several headings. But to be honest, these excellent essays all are a bit wasted on me because they're also long and difficult. I never got very far with them. But in a few years time, hopefully I will be a bit more familiar with the plays and then these essays will be a lot more helpful for me. And also these two editions are the only two that provide an index. I do love an index. It's as close a physical book can get to having a search engine. <laughs> For example, when I read King Henry VI, I think there, there was a mention of basilisk. I was thinking, basilisk. Um, but then if you ask me where it, where it was, I'll have to look through the whole thing to find it, and I'm not sure I, I can. But because there's an index, then you know exactly where the basilisk is. The essays in the Penguin edition are a lot shorter, and in comparison a lot more friendly and accessible. The next one is the Folger edition. I haven't read this one yet, so I can't comment on the content of the essay, so that's why I'm putting this right in the middle. Um, but just looking at the structure of the book, I already like the logic of how the essays are arranged. So, in all the other editions, you have a whole stack of essays under introduction. Am I supposed to read the essays before I go on to the play itself? Because they are introductions. But if I don't know what the play is about, how do I follow your analysis? And also, I feel like people who write the introductions don't care very much about spoiling the story. Even the the introductions are always before the the play, if you know what I mean. Um, even though I know Shakespeare was written 400 years ago, it's a bit late to complain <laughs> people are spoiling it for me. But still, I'm trying to read it. I don't want people to tell me what it's about before I read it for myself. I don't like introductions, have so much information that I can't really take in. If I did decide to read the 168 pages essays on Hamlet, I might never get to Hamlet itself because the introduction is so long, I might give up long before I get to the end of the essays. So, but in Folger, <laughs> after all that, but in Folger, everything before the play is there to help you, to prepare you to read the play itself. For example, there's a two-page introduction and a section on Shakespeare's language to help you navigate that. And then there's one article on Shakespeare's life and one on his theatre at the time to give you bigger context. And then you read the play after that, there is one essay to give you more food for thought. I think that's a better logic.
And then at the end, there is um, a section on further reading. This is the longest section on further reading. Uh, it lists not only the titles of all the books, but also it gives a decent summary of each book, which I think will be super helpful for students because you don't have to judge if you're interested in this book or not by just looking at the title. You can actually read a good summary. I think this is really amazing. I haven't read it yet, but I already like it very much. The next one, the Oxford School Edition. The unique thing about this edition is this target audience school students. The best feature, I think, in this edition is one section called Exploring Such and Such in the Classroom, and it suggests a lot of brilliant things to get students do something and to get involved. For example, in Romeo and Juliet, it says, create a Elizabethan ball. Masks might also be designed, made, and worn. And another one I think is brilliant is called a conscience corridor. So choose a significant part of the play for one of them for Romeo or Juliet. So for example, when Juliet decides to fake her suicide and he says, choose a part and then create a conscience corridor for them. What does that mean? So one student will play Juliet and the rest of the class will create two lines facing each other forming the corridor and one side of the corridor will advise caution and the other side of the corridor will urge her to go on with her plan and Juliet will have to walk down the corridor to seek advice as she passes each student will urge her to take their guidance once she reaches the end she must decide what to do I think that's amazing. And then in Macbeth, he says, ask your students to cast the parts for a new film version of Macbeth. They first need to give um, the characters a profile, write the character's profile, and then they must make a report on which actors they are going to invite to take the part. I think that's really cool to think about the characters in the play and then think whose image will match the personality of the characters. Yeah, I think it's an excellent um, exercise. And another one is really fun as well. Um, so ask the students to imagine they are Lady Macbeth and to write a letter to her husband after the murder of Duncan. I think that's really excellent as well. How could student not love taking part in the classroom like this. It gives a lot of extra help to the students as well. All the leading characters are described in detail. There's a synopsis of each scene. There is a scene by scene commentary. And like in the Folger edition, there's explanation of what's blank verse, what's iambic pentameter. It's all very helpful for students, I'm sure. Um, and again, because of the audience, the essays are short and to the point, and I read all of them. The essays in the RSC edition are also short and concise and to the point and not very academic. This edition also provides a scene by scene analysis, just like the Oxford School edition. These are the only two that provides scene by scene analysis. But I think the glory of this edition is the article on performances with a focus on the RSC theatre production in chronological order and with some really, really fascinating facts. For example, this is the first time I got to know the freedom a director has to adapt a 400-year-old play with Victorian, modern or futuristic settings. The same play, the same story, different settings work perfectly. How the thinking behind each interpretation reflects what was happening in the world, what was happening in England at the time, and also how the age of the actors change the tone and the dynamics of the play subtly. It's all fascinating. Um, there are also interview transcripts at the back with two directors and one actor. And also this edition feels the most 
theater focused. He really brings text to life. Last thing, let's look at how the pages are arranged when we get to the main text of the play itself. The Arden and the Oxford edition, they look quite similar. Their layouts are the same. The main text of the play is in one column on the top with notes in two columns at the bottom. My complaint is for the Arden edition, the font size of the notes it's really quite small. The main text is not too bad, but the Oxford one, the font size for both the main text and the notes is very small. So both of them are quite small. It's so small, it's a bit difficult to read. And the RSC one also has a top and bottom layout. So the main text is on the top and the notes are mostly short and quite simple. So they are in one column occupies full width of the page. And in all other editions, the stage directions are within the speeches, but the RSC one places them on the right hand side margin, which makes them stand out more. I hope you can see. And the main text and the notes are smallish as well. Penguin Classics, they put the main text in one single column with no notes on the page at all. They are at the back of the book and it feels like Penguin designed this for reading through with least distraction. But obviously when you do want to look at something up, it's quite far away. You might need two bookmarks. Instead of top and bottom, the Oxford School Edition makes better use of the bigger size and squarer page by putting the main text and the notes left and right. I personally find this easier to follow because there's a shorter distance to travel on the page and I don't lose my place as often. The body text on the right is in a serif font and the notes on the left is in a smaller sans serif font and they are both in good size and they are very clear to read. There is a short summary of each scene at the beginning, like here, um, and there are many illustrations when he explain what a word means. For example, shut up, he means went to bed, closed up the curtains of the bed. He also shows a picture of the bed, which is really useful to show why he need to or he can be shut up. There are also a lot of images scattered um, around the book, images of theatre productions in the past and explaining where and when this production happened. And it's just really lovely to see, for example, Ian McCallan and Judy Dench in their 30s and 40s. It's just a really lovely picture. The Folger edition also has the left and right design, but the main text and the notes are spread onto two opposite pages. The main text of the play is on the right hand side and the notes are on the left opposite. The, this is the only edition where the font size of the note are as big as the main text. So the notes are in text and also there are illustrations. There is also a scene summary at the beginning of each scene. Only the Forger edition and the Oxford School edition provide scene summary at the beginning of each scene. So in summary, the Oxford edition I don't like how stiff it is. I don't like how small the font size is for the main text of the play, for the notes, for the essays. Just generally, it's not very pleasant to read. It's not encouraging me to pick it up and get into it. But it's almost always the cheapest edition. But I just want to make it clear. It's not always a problem. It's very strange. I find it the stiff, binding and the paper is a unique problem with the Oxford Shakespeare. You can see a whole shelf of Oxford World's Classics behind me. It's never a pro problem before. Um, they open completely fine. The, the paper stock is a bit like the Penguin 
classic paper stock, a bit yellow, it's soft and light. So I haven't got a problem with Oxford World's Classics at all. I love it because how cheap it is. I don't know why, but it seems to be a unique problem with the Oxford Shakespeare series. So next, the Arden edition has the most robust collection of essays. The Penguin Classics edition, I haven't got a strong feeling about this one. I like it's clean and cluttered and the paper stock is my favorite. The next one is the Folger edition. I need to get to know it a bit better, but I do really like the look of it. This might be my new favorite yet. The RSC edition. Um, I haven't got strong feelings about the main text of the play either, but I do love the essays best. It really makes me love theater a lot. So the top on my list is the Oxford School edition. I do like this one very much. I like the layout. I like the illustrations and the pictures. I like the essays are concise to the point and just generally how he tries to encourage young people, to encourage students to get into Shakespeare's plays, be creative and get involved and love it and be enthusiastic about it. I just really love the whole vibe and it does encourage me and excite me um, to get into it as well. So I do like this edition. So I've shown you six different editions of Shakespeare's plays. I hope you get a better idea now. So next time when you need to buy a new one, you know which one to go for. I think their job is to help us, to guide us into Shakespeare's plays, to help us to understand it better. Some definitely do the job better than others. So the choice are yours. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one.